Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. If you're new here, my name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials to give you ideas on ways to make and create more economically and ecologically. So if you like that kind of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and joining me every week here in the lab. For this project, you're going to need several empty aluminum cans and we'll be using the walls of the cans, so you'll need to flatten them. I have a video tutorial on how to cut, how I cut and flatten the cans linked in the corner above and I'll also put a link in the description box of this video. The next step is to cut the aluminum pieces and if you have a lot of patience you can try cutting the pieces by hand but it'll be much easier if you have a cutting machine. And I have some free templates in a PDF file format if you want to try to cut them by hand and also in an S. VG format and they're available on my blog which I will also link in the description. And there's also a full tutorial on how to cut aluminum cans on a Cricut cutting machine that will be linked in the description so you can check all of those references if you'd like more information on how to cut the cans using a Cricut cutting machine. There are three templates in this set and there are six sizes of petals and several different sizes of leaves. You can see that this one got a little bit chewed up, but it'll be just fine once we uh, bend and flatten the material. And then I did cut two of the smaller sizes because if you use the three smaller flower petals, you get a nice rose bud. And if you add the a larger three sizes, that'll make a full rose. Weeding or separating the material is pretty easy. You just need to gently fold the aluminum to start the separation and then the material is pretty easy to pull apart. You do want to be a little bit careful but it does come apart right along the cut or score line. So as I mentioned six of the petal shapes make a rose and the smaller three petals make a nice pretty rose bud. But the first thing we need to do is prepare the leaves. And to do that, I'm gonna use a soft mat. You could use a piece of felt or a thin piece of foam and a small embossing tool. And I'm just gonna draw a line down the center of my leaves to make a little bit of a curve in them and to add that bend so that they look more leaf shaped. And once I have all of the leaves embossed, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of E6000 glue to the bottom of the leaf and add a short piece of wire about five inches long. And I'm just using some really inexpensive, lightweight florist wire. E6000 glue takes about 24 hours to fully cure, so you probably want to leave this set at least overnight to give it several hours to harden before moving on to the next step. You can paint this material using any technique you like, but I really like using this bright Rust-Oleum copper spray paint for my undertones. So I'm my first step is to give all of my pieces a coat of the copper spray paint on both sides. Spray painting this lightweight material can be a little bit tricky, so I've taped down my leaf pieces. And then the easiest way to spray paint the petals was to just make sure that I was spraying straight down on top of them, and that made them move around a little bit less. To paint the rose petals, I'm just using three colors from my paint stash. I'm using Anita's Baby Pink and Dusty Rose, and then I have some Deco Art Berry Red. And for this technique, I'm just using a small piece of paper towel and dabbing on the lightest color, then the mid color, and then the darkest color. And you want a separate piece of paper towel for each paint color, but you don't need to wait for the paint to dry in between adding the colors. So you can add all three colors fairly quickly, and you don't even really want to cover the copper up entirely. For the leaves, my colors are Deco Art, Sour Apple, Metallic Festive Green, and Avocado. And I'm just using the same paper towel painting technique to apply the color. Once the paint is dry on all of my pieces, I'm ready to add a sealing coat. And I've been using this DecoArt Duraclear Gloss Varnish. I really like it. It goes on really easily. It's a nice shiny finish and it's good for outdoors. I want to apply the finish to both sides. So I'm brushing a coat on and then just moving my pieces out of the pool of finish so they won't stick to my mat. And then once they're dry, I'll flip them over and put a finishing coat on the opposite side. I'm ready to do the assembly now, and to do that I need to punch a hole in the middle of my petal pieces, 
and anything sharp will do to make a small hole. I'm actually using my weeding tool from my Cricut machine and I'm not worried about getting it perfectly in the center. I'm just kind of eyeballing it and punching the hole. Next I'm using some inexpensive Dollar Tree wire and I'm just going to cut it to the length that I think I want the stem of my roses. So I'm using about 12 inch pieces and I'm using four pieces for each rose. I'm twisting the ends of the wire together to attach them and then I'm going to string on all of the rose petals starting with the largest size and working my way down to the smallest size petal. Once I have all the petals on my wire I want to close off the end so I'm using a pair of jewelry pliers and needle nose pliers just to kind of wind a little bit of a knot to hold the pieces on at the very top. And then I'm going to start with my smallest petal shape. I'm going to slide it all the way to the top where the knot is and using my round tipped jewelry pliers I'm going to shape the petals into sort of a rose shape. So I'm going to start at the tips of the petal and kind of roll them inward using my jewelry pliers. And then once that first petal is shaped I can push it toward the center and roll my next petal the same way and then wrap it around the original petal and, and continue building the rose in that fashion. As I mentioned, if you're making a rose bud, you're just going to use the three smaller petal pieces and you'll form them all the same way. To make the full rose, you'll layer four of the petal pieces, the four smaller petal pieces in this fashion, and then the last two pieces, the two largest pieces, I shaped slightly differently. So you can see I'm bending the petals a little bit differently and then rolling them toward the outside instead of the inside. And for each layer I did add a little bit of E6000 glue to hold the petals 
together. You can add the leaf shapes in any way you want. I did pairs and also in sets of three and just kind of placed them on the stems wherever I wanted them. And then I would attached everything by just twisting the wires together. I also made bigger branches. So I made some with just leaves, some rosebuds and some full roses. And then I attached those pieces together as well. And once I was done with that, because of the wire I was using, I did need to add a little extra support. So I just had some, I'm not even sure what gauge it is, but it was sort of heavy duty copper wire that I attached to the stems of my pieces just to add a little bit of support, but still leave them flexible. And to attach those pieces together, I again just used some inexpensive florist wire. The last thing you want to do once you've got your pieces all built together is you want to cover up the stem stems and if you're leaving your pieces inside you can use some florist tape to cover that up and that would go quickly. Since mine are going outside I did choose to use more of the florist wire which did take quite a while to wrap the pieces but it'll be much more sturdy in the outdoors. Don't forget to check all the resources that I have for you in the description of this video. And if you enjoyed today's content, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, I'd love to have you subscribe and join me here every week. If you enjoy aluminum can projects, I have lots of other tutorials for you to check out. So click or tap your screen now. And thanks so much for spending some time here with me. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab for my next experiment.